I'm here with Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Alexander, let's talk about Argentina, and it looks like it's heading into its ninth default since Argentina got its independence from Spain in 1816, I'm seeing here. And uh, the country is virtually insolvent. I don't know about virtually. It's pretty much insolvent from what I understand. This comes from the uh, front runner in the elections, which will be taking place in October. Um, the front runner, Alberto Fernandez, is putting a lot of the blame um, of Argentina's economic and financial woes on the shoulders of the IMF and Christine Lagarde. Alexander, what's going on in this latest Argentina meltdown? Well, let, let's just explain what has happened in Argentina. But we need to discuss the IMF and we need to discuss Christine Lagarde, because for me, that is the single most interesting aspect of this whole thing. Now, what happened in Argentina? Argentina, as you rightly say, is a country which perennially overspends, perennially overborrows, eventually runs out of road. There's a massive default. There's a big economic crisis. The people who've lent money to our Argentina lose a lot of that money and the whole cycle seems to endlessly repeat itself this despite the fact that Argentina is actually intrinsically a very rich country abundant natural resources immensely rich agriculture potentially um, it should be a rich and prosperous country but it's always been mismanaged now it did have a period when things were managed if not exactly well, at least rather less badly than they have been at other points in Argentine history. And this is when a man came into, became president, a man called Nestor Kirchner, after the previous big epic Argentine default in the 1990s. And he was a workaholic. And after the default, he made absolutely sure that spending was kept very much under control. He kept a very, very tight grip on spending. And because Argentina was in default, he didn't have to repay massive amounts on loans. And he was able, uh, uh, as a result, to bring inflation down and to restore some growth to the economy. And there was even a period of time when some people were talking about an Argentine miracle. But it was a miracle, it must be stressed, which was based on default. Then N Nestor Kirchner died, many people think, from overwork. His wife, Christina, took over. She was not, I think it's fair to say, as rigorous in state maintaining his policies as he was. She negotiated a debt write-off with some of the creditors, but others were unhappy and they took the case to various courts in New York. And the result was that Argentina couldn't borrow. And so things were starting to deteriorate, but were just about holding together. Then a couple of years ago, a new president came in, much more conventional, much more orthodox, loved by the financial markets, a neoliberal, a globalist, all of these things. He immediately settled all outstanding disputes with all of Argentina's remaining creditors. He cut taxes, money flowed into Argentina, the spending, uh, uh, spending increased, debt then started to increase, debt then began to get out of control. Argentina came under huge pressure and last year, disaster, he took out a $50 billion loan with the IMF, which led to all kinds of austerity. Argentina has not been able to maintain this austerity, Macri, is looking increasingly likely to lose the election. So the country has crashed again, and we are again in default. Now, that's the story of Argentina. It's a sad story. It's, it's a sad story of a country with lots of promise, which repeatedly seems to fail. But in a way, it's not a new story. The person we really need to focus on in this, in my opinion, is the next president of the European Central Bank, who is Christine Lagarde. 
Now, Christine Lagarde, as many people have pointed out, is not an economist. She's a lawyer. True. Lawyers can make very good bankers. I don't hold that against her. The problem with Christine Lagarde is that she is an ideologue who does exactly whatever the Western globalist, neoliberal combinat wants her to do. So she supported this extraordinary financial waterboarding of Greece, even though the officials in the IMF told her what you're doing to Greece isn't going to work. It is unsustainable. She loaned $25 billion to Ukraine. There's already stories that $8 billion of those dollars have gone missing. Lending money to Ukraine broke the IMS own rules. And then last year, she makes the biggest ever loan in IMF history, $50 billion to a country which is whose economy is running out of control and which has this enormous history of default behind it. And this is the person who is now going to be appointed next head of the European Central Bank. If this isn't evidence that in the world of high finance and globalism and neoliberalism, failure is the guarantee of career success, what is? So you think Fernandez is right when he yes. places the blame on, on the guard? Well, I think he is to a great extent in the sense that obviously Argentina's problems would not be as great now as they are um, if Argentina had not been given that $50 billion loan last year and had not been squeezed in the way that it was. I mean, and that was, com but the point, that was completely reckless and irresponsible lending. But that money that was loaned to Argentina was your tax dollars, my tax dollars, everybody's tax dollars, because the IMF gets its funds from its members, which include, first and foremost, the United States and the Western powers. What Lagarde did, and what she always does, is she puts economics to one side, focuses on politics, invariably helps out those people, the West supports, in order to keep some kind of neoliberal project going. And that's the person who's now going to be taking over the European Central Bank. Um, uh, it's a recipe for disaster. So, she, so the bailout was actually $56.3 billion, to be well, precise. So even, so you, 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 you were roughly $7 billion generous to... Well, well, they, <laughs> well, they, well there you go. Like, you know, I, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a conservative man. I always assume the best <laughs> people. <laughs> so, so why does Lagarde do this? What's, what's the reasoning behind it? Where's the money? Where did the money go in Argentina's case? Eight billion has already disappeared in Ukraine's case. As far as Greece is concerned, 11, 11 years ago, Greece owed 300 and something billion. Today it owes 350 something billion. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, well, whatever money was led to Greece disappeared as well. What's, what's this, what's this well, trick that Lagarde, this neoliberal magic trick that Lagarde is playing where money from taxpayers is yeah. going into these countries and it's not making the countries any better no, and it's it disappearing into the pockets of who well i mean it, it makes the, it makes the situation worse that's what it invariably does where where most of this money goes uh, most of this money goes is obviously into the hands of banks who have loaned money to these countries and who are in effect being bailed out so you bail out the banks not by giving the money directly to the banks, but by giving money to the debtor, who then passes it over to the banks. That's only some of it. I mean, some of the people who uh, get bailed out in this way are the, the, the sort of the local oligarchs and economic interests. And Argentina is a very cartelized country. I mean, it's dominated by very powerful uh, um, economic and very, very powerful economic groups 
which have always historically had very much their levers, very close to the levers of power, a bit like Ukraine in some ways. And they've obviously done extremely well. Some of the politicians have also done extremely well. Why does Lagarde do it? She does it, as I said, to support neoliberal projects. She did it in Greece because that supported the euro and it was it kept the eurozone together. Th that was the project. So you give money to Greece, you support the euro, the globalist neoliberal elite wants the euro to survive, so you give money to Greece. You give money to Ukraine. Why do you give money to Ukraine? Because Ukraine is part of this great geopolitical struggle with Russia that we have ongoing with Russia. So you support Ukraine. You don't look at the economic fundamentals of Ukraine. You don't concern yourself with basic issues of governance in Ukraine. You don't ask yourself whether it's a good idea to give someone like Petro Poroshenko, the uh, uh, billionaire oligarch who is the Ukraine's president. You don't ask yourself whether it's, it makes any kind of sense to give a person like that money. And you don't ask yourself whether in fact Ukraine is already in default, which it was because Ukraine was not paying money that it owed to Russia. So what you do instead is you disregard all those things. You give Ukraine $25 billion because Ukraine is on the front line of this great geopolitical conflict with Russia. And with Argentina, you don't ask yourself again, is Argentina the sort of country where we could, should be lending money to? You don't ask yourself, you know, have the issues of governance in Argentina really been sorted out? Is it really a good idea to give money to Argentina at a time when Argentina's economy is overheating, very visibly overheating, and where uh, 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 money is pouring out of the country and where inflation is rising and where the currency is collapsing? You don't ask yourself those questions. You say to yourself, well, we have this great agenda in South America to reverse the so-called pink tide that we used to see with people like Lula in Brazil and uh, Morales in Bolivia and Carrera in Ecuador and the Kirchners in Argentina. Or to, Remember, stop, or to stop another Bolsonaro. Oh, well, stop. well, exactly. You want to stop all of those things. So you give money to Macri, who is your loyal you know, loyal, neo-globalist, elitist person. And of course, the money is blown. As I said, some of it has ended up in the hands of the banks. Some of it undoubtedly has ended up in the hands of economic interests. There's plenty of corruption in Argentina. A lot of people have become very rich. But the people of Argentina suffer. Yeah, it's a great ideology for Lagarde and her pals because not only do they keep their, their little projects going, but they all make a lot of money. In Argentina's and, and, case, as you said, the cartels probably came out with billions and billions. Yeah. In Ukraine, we know they came out with billions, the oligarchs. And in Greece, the same story. Yes, so, of course, because what you're going deal. to do... What you're going to do is if you, get, if you get dollars, if you're an Argentine businessman, call it, let's call them businessman, the very first thing you're going to do is you're not going to convert them into Argentine pesos, which will lose all their value tomorrow. You take them away and you put them up, you put them in a bank in the Cayman Islands or perhaps even in Florida. <laughs> it, that, that's, I mean, it's obvious that that's what's going to happen. And that's exactly what did happen. And of course, lots of middle middlemen along the way have done very well out of it. Now she's going to be in charge of the European Central Bank. And she's going to be doing the same thing as the president of the European Central Bank. <laughs> it's, it's such and, an effing and, joke. I mean, really, I mean, it is such I mean, an effing... It, it's like the worse you do, the yeah. worse you do, the more you screw up the world, yeah. the better promotion you get. I've never seen anything like this. A business, any business... Small, well, medium-sized business, business would never be able to survive with this type of philosophy, this type well, of they, hiring practice. Well, there you go. I mean, the, the, the more spectacular your failure, the greater your, <laughs> your success. I mean, what she's now going to do, bear in mind that at least the IMF couldn't create money. I mean, it can only lend the money it is given 
by the governments which are its members. But the, the European Central Bank actually creates money. It's a bank. It's a central bank. So it, it can engage in quantitative easing experiments, for example. It can actually create money. And that is exactly what Lagarde is going to do. She is going to prioritize the neoliberal geopolitical projects above economic realities. She is going to accelerate the demise of the European Union yes. and the dismemberment of the European Union. There is no doubt about it. Everything she touches turns to failure. So yes. maybe this is a good thing. I don't know how to look at it. I'm a glass, you know, full type of guy, I guess. So maybe Lagarde taking over the ECB will actually speed along the the dissolution of the of the European Union. Well, it, it will accelerate the crisis because that's the only thing she's ever done. She has taken in all of these countries, Greece, Ukraine, Argentina, she's taken situations and made them much worse. And let's repeat again, that loan to Ukraine was huge. This loan to Argentina is the biggest in IMF history. Who in their senses lends that kind of money to a country with a record of default? Well, you, you've, you've described it, nine, nine defaults. And whose economy is already overheating and whose currency is already collapsing. Who in their senses does that? It's all mm -hmm. about chaos with yeah. her. Well, it's all about well, chaos. Well, well, you Riding know, I, the pockets I, of her masters and just just creating chaos everywhere she goes. And now yes. she's in the in the central bank of Europe. Exactly. Un unbelievable. Absolutely. Exactly. I mean, the, uh, come back to what we said. We said it three times now. The greater her failure the more spectacular her failure, the more stellar her rise. I mean, what will she become next, one wonders? I mean, you know, will she, you know, what, what position will they find for her um, after she fails as, you know, European Central Bank Chair? Will they make a Secretary General of the United Nations? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you, you laugh <laughs> now, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Angela Merkel in that position well, in I a would, couple I of would, years. I, I, I wouldn't, but I, I wouldn't either. But as I said, the more you fail, the more you succeed. And others, others, however, have to pay the bill. Yeah, all of us pay the bill. All of us. All of us. Well, that's what I exactly. All of us pay the bill. Unbelievable. Alexander Verkurs, editor in chief of the Durand. Thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. You can get an audio copy of this video. Follow us on iTunes and SoundCloud. The link is in the description box down below. And please help out this channel by donating to us on PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar. You will find those links in the description box down below as well. And also help us out by going to the Durant shop and picking up some original double-headed eagle merchandise or magic <laughs> mug merchandise, original one-of-a-kind Durant gear. Alexander, you've got one of the magic mugs there. I certainly do. And as I said, I've been drinking Queen Anne tea. People always ask, want to know what, which tea I'm drinking, but it's been a slightly cooler day. So now I'm reverting to the more English style of teas, which I love. And uh, this is a perfect mug to drink it from. It's 15 ounces. It's beautiful porcelain. Um, it's got the badge of the Russian Federation, like the mug of another famous tea drinker, almost as famous to some of our viewers, as I suspect I am now, who is Vladimir Putin. He was drinking from exactly this kind of mug um, at the G20 summit. The one thing I would say is this is a beautiful mug. Um, we are getting extraordinary feedback on these. If you want a mug like this, buy it from us, not from all sorts of imitators who are now starting to appear on the scene. And the same applies to our other merchandise. I you know, look at this fantastic shirt I'm wearing, T-shirt, long sleeve T-shirt, 100% cotton. It's got our Duran double-headed eagle there. Um, it's got this amazing dye. I was walking today with my dogs in Hampstead Heath with this shirt on, looking incredibly smart and comfortable 
on a day that is bright and sunny, but rather cool. And we've got shirts for every season and condition of the year. I should know because I've worn them. So you'll find shirts, you'll find mugs like this, you'll find uh, you had hoodies and hats and stickers and all sorts of other amazing things. You'll find our wonderful books. We've done two wonderful books on Russiagate, which explain Russiagate, this incredibly overcomplicated story, really well. We've got uh, um, a, an amazing book on Brexit, which uh, we're thinking of doing a, a follow-up on, because obviously events have now moved beyond the point where they'd reached when we did that book. You can find all of these things on our shop. Um, you want to help the Duran? Go to our shop, help yourself also, buy these wonderful things, these original things from the original source, not from the bad and cheap imitators. Alex will tell you how to do it. The link for the shop is in the description box down below. Alexander McCurry, editor-in-chief of Durant. Thank you very much. Till next time, everybody, take care.